Hey guys, Matthew, it's been a really long time since my last upload. I've just been pushing for crafting and I've been pushing for my build and I've just been having an absolute blast. Uh, but now that the actual league start push, if you want to call it that, is, uh, you know, over, it's time to start making co content for you guys again. And uh, in today's video, we're basically going to be going over, if you will, an intro to crafting with recombinators. And this is going to feed, if you will, into all of the different crafting videos that are going to be coming out after this one. Uh, in regards to how we crafted every single one of the GG items that you can find in the mirror thread. So we've crafted the best physical bow to ever exist in a temp lead. We've crafted the best uh, frenzy charge ring to ever exist. We've crafted uh, the 12 link wand, the 12 link uh, claw. Uh, you know, we, we've crafted a bunch of different things. Uh, and I'm going to be making a single video for every single one of those crafts going into the step by step. Same thing I did last league essentially uh, to teach you guys how to do it. In some cases, utilizing recombinators. In other cases, not utilizing recombinators. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, but there was a massive write-up on Reddit written by my good friend Iron vs. Wild about this whole recombinator shenanigans. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing uh, because it's quite long. However, it'll be linked in the description for the people who want to read through it. And again, a huge shout-out to Iron vs. Wild for his research. Now, this data, or at least these rule sets, are ones that were uh, actually figured out by a lot of different crafters. Uh, myself and my team included, uh, after utilizing, you know, many, many recombinators. Uh, but his write-up has some very good statistics and even some little, uh, you know, um, uh, some, some little visuals, if you will, to try to understand the system better. Uh, for example, this one right here, or sorry, this one right here, where he actually explains the, the way that it goes about pooling modifiers and choosing modifiers. Uh, so th very, very good guide. But again, we're just going to go through the big things and then we're going to hop in game and we're going to put the theory to test to understand, uh, to see if we can basically, um, we can basically uh, make it work, if you will. So the first thing that we need to understand about recombinators is how they actually work. Now, one thing that is mainstream, everybody knows this, is that if you put two bases, it's going to pick one of those bases and anything that is permanent to that base is going to basically always be there and everything that is, uh, if you will, not is going to be discarded if it's impossible to roll. So for example, if you had a synthesized base and an influence base and you have two influence modifiers on the influence modifier and the synthesized base is the one that is chosen, these modifiers uh, that are influenced cannot be on the synthesized base, therefore they're discarded. And uh, yeah, that's that's something that everybody knows, right? Um, very important to, to, to actually crafting because it means that if you want specific modifiers from say specific influences, you'll want to make sure to always use you know actual uh, influence bases. Uh, same goes for say synthesized bases. If you want to have a very specific synthesized base, let's just say plus one arrow bow, you'll want to make sure that you're not recombinating with a non plus one synthesized arrow bow because then if it chooses the wrong base, you're essentially just automatically lost whatever you're trying to do. Uh, and again, this is going to be more important when we go into the more end game crafting, which we will in the future videos for this series, if you will. Uh, Alright, so now we all know that. Now, the next thing that we need to understand is essentially, uh, is there any difference with the amount of prefixes and the amount of suffixes? And is there a difference between total amount of modifiers? And to, those answer, to both those questions, the answer is yes, there's a difference. Prefixes and suffixes are treated indifferently, or, or sorry, differently. Uh, so... Or not differently, independently is what I should say. What that means is if you have an item with, say, three prefixes and an item uh, and, and three suffixes and an item with three prefixes and one suffix, it's not going to take all those prefixes and all those suffixes and add them together. It'll take both items with three different prefixes, put that in a pool, and it'll take the item with three suffix and one suffix and put that in a pool, and they're going to be picked uh, from independently. Uh, and this is very, very important to understand because it means that some in some cases where you're trying to work specifically on suffixes or specifically on prefixes, you don't need to worry about how many of the of the, uh, of the affix type that you don't care that are on the item, which makes preparing bases much easier. Uh, again, once we go into the actual live example of that in the game, you'll be able to see what I mean. Okay, now the second question is, what about the number of affixes? Is there a difference to that? And there is a difference. The way that this system works is that the more modifiers in the pool, the more modifiers it's likely to pick. So you can see that over thousands of recombinators, this is the data that Iron was able to figure out. If there's one mod in the pool, there's a 66% chance to choose that one mod. There's a 33% chance to choose nothing, which means you'd end up with 
no prefix or, or no suffix. If there's two mods in the pool, there's a 33% chance to get both and a 66% chance to get only one. Uh, there's, if there's three mods, four mods, five mods, and so on. Of course, once we get into the actual game, the actual example, I'll be able to showcase this a little bit better. That means that essentially it's very important that you get more modifiers on your item or more modifiers in the pool on your item if you're trying to keep a specific modifier. Now, this also means uh, that um, the more modifiers that you want to have on your item, the more mods need to be in the pool. Therefore, the more RNG you're going to add to your item, right? Because if you're trying to keep a very specific modifiers, the more mods in the pool there are, the more chance you have of keeping that one specific mod. For example, if you had only that one mod and you were trying to put it onto another item, you would have only a 66% chance, you would have a 66% chance to keep that one mod. However, if there was six mods in the pool, you'd have a 70% chance. So when it comes to single modifiers, there's actually not much of a difference. But let's just say that you're trying to keep two prefixes, right? So two mods in the pool. If your item only had two mods, there would only be a 33% chance to keep it. If it was a six mod item, there'd be a 70% uh, chance, if you will, to pick these two modifiers. Because if it picks, uh, if it doesn't have three modifiers to choose from and only it's two it, it, it won't actually be this 30 percent it'll be the 70 percent but the way to get six mods in the pool let's just say that you only have one mod that you actually you actually care for means that you'll need to uh add modifiers which can easily be removed which is mostly going to be on the bench now again this is heavy theory once we go into the actual game and i showcase what that means maybe it'll make more sense but exactly what i just mentioned when it comes to these crafted modifiers now, these are a double-edged sword, and this is going to be under the duplicated mods, right? If you have a doubled mods, so let's just say that your item has life on it, and you want to increase the odds of keeping that life on it, because let's say it's a tier 1 modifier. If you were to craft life on the item, on the other item, before you recombinate, you're actually going to drastically decrease your odds of keeping that life on the item, because yes, you're going to be increasing the number of mods in the pool, but you're also going to be adding another mod which if it was to pick life, if the system was to pick life, it can't pick both the T1 life and the crafted life. So there's a 50-50 chance that you actually lose your T1 life for the crafted bad life. So in some cases, doubling mods is actually really bad. In some cases, it's really good. Again, once we go into the actual example in game, I'll try to, uh, under, uh, I'll try to explain it a little bit better uh, because it's very, very, very important. This doubling modifiers here is essentially the backbone of how to take advantage of the system properly. Now, I see a lot of streamers and I've seen a lot of clips and I've seen a lot of videos of people who are basically YOLOing items where they'll take, for example, an item that has uh, two T1 prefixes. So let's just say a claw that has T1 fire and T1 cold and another claw that has T1 lightning, right? And nothing else, right? Just those prefixes, those three prefixes, and then they're going to recombinate them together and they're going to pray that they end up with triple T1. Well, if we go back to this, this thing here, if you were to actually do that and you have a basically you have three mods in the pool the odds of actually keeping all those three mods is a 20 percent chance this is extremely unlikely to happen which is why this is not the way you want to you want to cheat the system you want to cheat the system by having duplicated mods on both items which can essentially be removed so let's just take this exact example of a claw and if you had a claw which had say t1 fire and t1 lightning and another one has t1 cold if you do that 20% chance that you actually end up with that uh, those two uh, those three modifiers. So how do we increase our odds here? Well, what we could do is increase the total amount of mods in the pool. So what we could do is go from a three mod pool to a five mod pool by simply crafting a random prefix on both items. So we could go ahead and craft, say, I don't know, mana on both items. And then when we recombinate them, there's actually a 50% chance to end up with three mods. Now, the downside is that Yes, we are increasing the odds of keeping three mods, but we are also diluting the pool of modifiers that we want, right? In this now pool of five modifiers, there's two mana rolls, which we don't want. The moment that the system decides to actually put mana and it's there twice, the odds of actually getting it is significantly higher than any of the other modifiers, which are not duplicated, which is why there's a double-edged sword when it comes to crafting modifiers, and it, it needs to be used in basically very, very... Uh, if you will, specific circumstances where you know exactly what you're doing, if you will. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get into some actual examples, which hopefully are going to make this entire thing make a little bit more sense. So what I'll do here is I have two belts, and now these are both heavy belts, and they're, the, they're both the Elder uh, Influence, 
which means that there's no RNG when it comes to keeping the right base and keeping the right uh, influence, right? They're the same exact thing. Now, when it comes to endgame crafting, this is essentially what you'll want to be doing. When it comes to more entry level stuff, you kind of can just not care about that as much uh, because it won't matter all that much. So let's just go ahead and uh, use some alterations and then we're just going to alt spam until we get, uh, say, life or something like that. And then we're going to go from there. Um, so let's see if we can get some life. Okay, this, there, there we go. We got some life on that. Let's try to get some life on this. Okay, so this one has life and this one has life. Now remember that prefixes and suffixes are treated differently. So in this case, we have two modifiers in the pool. We have a T1 life and a T6 life. Right. If I was to recombinate that, looking at this here, we have a two we have two mods in the pool. We have thirty three percent chance to get both. Now, if it, if we do get both, there's a thirty three percent chance of that happening. Right. Well, it can't get both because both these modifiers are the same modifier. So it would basically uh, just choose which one it would put at random. Right. It might put the T one, but it might put the T six. However, there's also a sixty six percent chance that we actually end up with one single modifier. Now that's also fine because again, it's a six, it's a 50, 50. Now, if you were to recombinate this a million times, you will always end up with a life modifier on your item every single time, because there's two modifiers in the pool and they're basically the exact same modifier. Now let's see if I have some more heavy belts, elder heavy belts so that we can actually showcase that a few times. So let's see, I've got, I've got a few of these, right? So we can actually test this. So. Let's go ahead and get some life on all of those, and you'll see that it's never, ever not going to roll life. Okay, so we got life on all of them now. Life, 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 life. If I was to recombinate these two here, you'll see that it'll it'll, it'll get life. There, there's no way it doesn't get life. There we go. It got life, okay? Now, if I was to do this again with life and, and life, right, it'll get life. It'll always, it'll, it'll always get life. Okay, so we got life. Okay, now let's do this one one more time. One more time, right? Just to drive the point home. Life, life, it, it'll it always, always, always get life, okay? There we go. Now, in this case, it actually added a random uh, affix as well, which was a suffix. But as you can see, it will always, always get life because there's two mods in the pool and they're the same mod. There's a 33% chance that it picks both, in which case it'll pick one at random. And there's a 66% chance that it chooses one, which means it'll pick one at random. It'll always keep it there. Now, this is very useful to know because it means that if you're trying to recombinate, say, suffixes, let's say you're recom you're trying to recombinate suffixes on an item with like three perfect suffixes uh, or two perfect suffixes with two perfect suffixes, and you want the prefix to always, always stay the same, all you have to do is have a single prefix on both items, which is the same, and you'll always keep it. So, hypothetically speaking, let's just say that you're trying to make a pair um uh, let's no let's just say that you're trying to make a claw right you're trying to make a claw and you're trying to get a triple t1 claw with t1 attack speed if you had say t1 and t1 on one of the claw and then t1 and another t1 on the other claw and you have t1 attack speed on both of them and no other suffixes just t1 attack speed there's a hundred percent chance that you end up with t1 attack speed now it might actually lower in tiers there's a chance that it mutates and then it goes down in tiers. That's possible. There's also a chance that it adds another suffix. As we just saw on the belt here, it actually added a random suffix. That's also possible. There's nothing that you can do to prevent this. This is just a system adding some RNG so that it's not as item editing as it really is. Um, but that happens relatively rarely. Okay, so now that we know this, let's just go ahead and go a step further. Okay, now what if I had two prefixes that I actually care about and... Uh, that I wanted to keep both, right? So let's just say that I had, um, actually, let's see. I'm probably just gonna use essences here. Um, resistance, let's see, resistance. Okay, let's go to guild tab, because that'll be a little bit better. Resistance, okay, so, all right, this adds resistances, right? All right, so let's go ahead and showcase another example here. In this case, we're gonna be looking for two different resistance on the suffixes. So, all right, perfect, uh, and perfect, nice. So what we're gonna have here is we have T1 fire resistance from the essence and we have lightning resistance as well. And this one has T1 fire and T1 lightning resistance. Okay, uh, that's actually bad. Now that I think about it, we need cold. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can roll some cold resistance. Come on, give me some cold resistance. All right, this one's got cold resistance or, or, or chaos, that'll, that'll, that'll work as well. Okay, so let's just say that this item has a T1 fire and again, we're going to ignore the prefixes because they're treated independently. And this one is this one is T1 Fire, and this one is T1 Lightning, this one is T1 Fire, T1 Chaos, and T1 Cold. 
Now, the only thing that's duplicated here is the T1 fire, which means it's very likely to keep uh, to, to be kept. However, there's a lot of suffixes in this pool. There's six different suffixes. So if we go to the little table, there's six mods in the pool, right? So there's a 70% chance to choose all three of these. And there's a 30% chance to keep only two. So most of the time, if I was to recombinate this and that, I would end up with a three suffix item. So let's just go ahead and quickly put them in the recombinator. And then I'm going to open up a notepad. And we're going to basically look at this. Look at the modifiers and give ourselves a bit of a breakdown. So what's on the item is fire resistance, stun and block, lightning resistance. And then there's fire resistance, chaos resistance, and cold resistance. 70% of the time, we'll, keep, we'll end up with three of those. Now, fire resistance cannot be there twice. So if it does pick fire resistance, the other fire resistance is essentially removed. And it's going to pick two from this mod pool right here. However, that's not guaranteed at all, right? So let's just go ahead and add fire resistance back on. So let's just say that our goal here was to actually get the fire resistance. So we have it on both, which, which is really good. But let's just say that we wanted to have lightning resistance in either cold or chaos. How would we go about doing that? So what we need to do is remove modifiers from the pool that are basically not wanted. So we would have to remove the sun and block recovery. And on the other case, we would have to remove either the cold or the chaos, the one that we don't want and keep only the one that we want. Now, what that would do is that we would end up with an item that has, say, fire resistance and lightning resistance. And then another item, which is fire resistance and, say, cold resistance. Now we would actually have four mods in the pool, right? So if we go back to our table, there's four mods in the pool. There's a 35% chance that we end up with these three modifiers on our item. And the pool is not diluted by anything that we don't care for. However, there's another things that you could do. You could actually say, okay, well, I've got four mods in the pool, but I want to increase that to six mod because by increasing that to six mods, there's a 70% chance that it ends up with six mod. So what I could do is craft a suffix on both. By crafting a suffix on both, so let's just say I was to craft, I don't know, strength on both. Now there's going to be six modifiers in the pool and strength cannot be chosen twice. So there's going to be six mods in the pool, which means there's a 70% chance that I end up with three modifiers. However, the downside of doing that is that you're diluting the mods that you actually want. Yes, there's a 70% chance that you end up with three mods. And let's just say even if it was a 100% chance, right? Let's just say hypothetically, even if it was a 100% chance that actually you end up with three modifiers, it can still pick the strength, even if it's duplicated. Yes, if it picks the strength one time, it'll remove strength from the pool. And then it'll pick two modifiers from the rest of this pool, which is going to be either fire, lightning, uh, and fire and cold. And then if it does pick the fire, well, it can't pick it twice. Therefore, you're going to be guaranteed lightning or uh, lightning or cold. But in both uh, in both those cases, you're still going to end up with strength on your item. Now, the, the upside is that strength is crafted on both items. So as long as there's no mutation, no RNG that comes in and messes you up, you can just remove the, the the strength craft, and you'll end up with your your lightning and cold, or your lightning and fire, or whatever two resistances that you had. Which means that you're going to be able to just get another base that has two resistances and go again. So let's just go ahead and do exactly that. So hopefully I've got some more of these belts. Uh, so elder heavy belt. Okay, so I've got a few of these. So hopefully I can showcase uh, showcase that uh, a little bit more. All right. So okay. So first thing at first is we're gonna isolate the modifiers that we want. So in this case, well, we killed it. Uh, all right. So in this case, let's just go ahead. Okay, we've got uh, cold resistance. So let's just see if we can remove the thing that we don't want, which would be the flask effect duration. Okay, good. So now we've got the isolated fire and the cold. And in this case, let's just go ahead and try to annul the cold and keep the chaos. All right, perfect. All right, so let's just go ahead and look at the suffixes, right? We've got isolated fire and cold and isolated fire and chaos. So we've got four modifiers in the pool if we go here. So there's only a 35% chance that we end up with three modifiers. So we would need to do this on average about three times to actually end up with fire, cold, and chaos resistance. That's not great odds. So what we can actually do is, like I was saying, you could craft a random suffix. So let's just say we could craft lightning resistance on both. Now, if we craft lightning resistance on both, we end up with six modifiers in the pool. So there's a 70% chance that we end up with three mods. However, if it keeps the lightning resistance, well, it means that essentially there is no way that we'll end up with fire, chaos, and cold. But the upside is as long as the base is not that expensive, we could just get another base and do the exact same thing again because... Um, when, when it comes to the four modifiers in the pool, there's a good chance that you end up with the only two modifiers or one modifier, and then it could brick your base. 
So it's going to be basically your choice. You could go with the four modifiers and go for a 33% chance to end up with three mods and a 55% chance to end up with two mods, which means if it goes to the 55% chance to get two mods, you haven't lost anything, right? Because it's going to pick two of the modifiers at random. And again, you'll be able to go again. If you go with the six modifiers, there's a 70% chance that you get three modifiers. So much higher than this one. And of course, uh, if it doesn't, or if it does go with three modifiers with the crafted mod that you just added, you can just remove the crafted mod and you're left with your two suffixes that you actually wanted. And there's only a 30% chance that it picks two modifiers. And if it does go with two modifiers, well, as long as it doesn't pick the crafted modifier, your base is still safe. What I'm trying to say is that in order to increase your odds of getting the three suffixes that you actually want, if we look at the odds here of a 35% chance, which is a one in three versus a 70% chance, where there's a, if you will, 60% chance that you choose a modifier that we don't want, it is roughly the same, actually. So let's just go ahead and send it with the modifier that is crafted and see if we win the lottery or not. So fire is duplicated, and now it picked it both times. So what happened in this case is that it, it picked my fire both times, as you saw, both of them went blue. So because fire cannot be added twice. It picked it once, and then when I went to pick it twi uh, when I went to add it the second time, it couldn't do it. It was like, well, I, I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. So in this case, I was left with just fire resistance. This is essentially worst case scenario. I low rolled everything. I had six modifiers in my pool. I ended up with two modifiers, uh, right? And not only did I end up with two modifiers, I ended up with the crafted modifier, which is literally worst case scenario. So what I'll do here is I'll take another belt, and I'll try to isolate the uh, I'll try to isolate the fire resistance uh, in this case here. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so we could isolate that. Hopefully, okay. So we've isolated the fire resistance. Now we have isolated fire resistance on both. And if you remember the beginning of the video, uh, as long as we have, if we had fire resistance on both of them, right, and nothing else, it's always going to keep fire resistance, right? Always, always, always going to keep fire resistance. So the question would be now is what we want to add. Now, of course, we could add benchcraft, but that wouldn't really serve any real purpose. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to get another base, which is fire resistance, but also something else, whether we want it duplicated or not. So in this case, we got fire resistance and cold resistance. So let's go with another strategy this time. Yes, we have fire resistance on both of them. So right now we have four modifiers in the pool, right? So we have fire, we have fire, we have cold, and we have lightning. Right, so we're in the four mod pool. There's a 35% chance that we end up with three modifiers, but that's not really good. So what the strategy that we're going to go up uh, in this case is that we're going to go with crafting cold resistance. Now, by crafting cold resistance, we are greatly, greatly going to increase our odds of getting cold resistance on our belts because we have four modifiers in the pool, two times fire and two times cold. So if we look at a four modifier in the pool, there's a 35% chance to go with three mod. But the, the thing is, it can't choose three mods. If it was to choose three mods, well, it can't roll fire twice and it can't roll cold twice. So it automatically would be a win, right? So there's 35% chance for an automatic win. Now there's a, there's a um, well, of course, not automatic because it, it could choose the uh, crafted cold resistance. So there's a 50% chance of a 50% chance, if you will. Uh, because yes, the, the fire will be 100% there, but the cold could be the wrong one. There is a 55% chance for two mods in the pool, which again is essentially a 100% success rate uh unless well 100 percent, but then of course it could pick the wrong cold resistance and there's a 10 percent chance that we end up with one mod and that would essentially be a great failure if you will so if i wanted to add fire if i wanted to have fire resistance on my belt and then i i wanted to have the cold resistance the best way to go about it would be to have isolated fire resistance on both have cold on one of them and then of course have another random suffix now it doesn't have to be cold but the advantage of having cold is that, let's just say that I crafted fire on the other belt, right? Well, fire, or sorry, lightning on the other belt. I would have fire and fire, but I would have cold and lightning. So if it were to pick a cold resistance, and then it, it, it it's not a 50 of whether 50 50 of whether I get the, the, the actual uh, cold that is crafted versus the, the, the one that I actually want, because it would be lightning. Um, however, now that I think about it, that, that doesn't change anything because the, the modifier is chosen. Uh, it would only choose something if it was to choose three modifiers, but because it can't in our case, it's actually fine. That would only change something if, let's just say that uh, instead of having just the fire uh, and the cold, we had fire, cold, and say lightning. Then by having crafting cold, uh, it, it would change our odds of, of getting the other crafted cold uh, versus the, the actual natural cold. But that's like 
a little bit more advanced, so we're not going to worry about that. So we're just going to go ahead and, and send that. The fire resistance is pretty much guaranteed to be there. It's not. It's never really guaranteed unless there was no other suffixes, uh, but it's very unlikely that we lose it. And then, of course, it's going to be a 50-50 of whether it chooses the actual fire resistance. So in this case, it actually decided to choose our fire resistance. As I said, that was extremely likely to happen. But what did happen, however, is that it chose the wrong cold resistance, right? When it chose the second modifier to be added to the pool because we rolled a two modifier, uh, or actually we rolled a three modifier because we rolled the fire resistance twice. Uh, you could see that the, the actual T1 fire resistance stayed blue. It didn't go red. Uh, so because it stayed twice, we actually rolled a three mod, but because fire resistance can't be there twice, it had to add cold. And unfortunately, we low rolled on the cold. We got the crafted instead. Okay, so this is essentially the basic. Now let's talk about what if you wanted to have a three actual suffixes. And this is where the system is mostly going to be as useful as possible. So let's just say that we had a fire and now let's go ahead and get another resistance. Perfect. Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, okay, perfect. So we have fire and cold on this one. Now, let's just say I wanted to make a triple resistance belt. What I would need to do is get the fire and the cold on one of them and the fire and the lightning on another, or it could also be cold and lightning. It doesn't really matter, but I've got fire essences here. So let's just go ahead and use those. And of course, the prefixes and the suffixes are treated differently. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at that. So we've got T1 fire and T1 lightning, and we've got T1 fire and T3 cold. Okay, so we've got potential to make a good suffix belt here. Now, of course, these belts are not worth anything, but it's just as an example. So looking at the whole thing right now, we've got fire and cold, and then we've got fire and lightning. So we've got a total of four mods in the pool. The odds of actually basically winning would be to actually get the three mods, which is a 35% chance. If we roll the two mods, then we're essentially going to not lose our base right? Because it's going to come with either fire and cold or fire and lightning or cold and, or, or cold and fire uh, or cold and lightning, which are all going to be basically the, the exact same thing as if we, have, if we had never done that, except we lose our base. And there's only a 10% chance that we completely brick everything. So 35% chance of success, 55% chance that you can basically go again for another 35% chance of success. But we could actually consider crafting modifiers, crafting duplicated modifiers. So if we were to craft the duplicated modifiers, we would go from a five, uh, a four mod pool to a six mod pool. Now a six mod pool has a 70% chance of success. However, of course, when it picks the three modifiers, right? And there's a 70% chance of that happening, it could pick the duplicated modifier. So that means that it could pick fire twice. In that case, it would be a failure. Another thing that could happen is it could also pick the crafted modifier. If it picks the crafted modifier, that's also going to count as a modifier, even if it's duplicated. So that would also be an automatic failure because it means that you wouldn't be able to pick up the other two suffixes. So in this case, if you wanted to actually maximize our odds of getting fire and cold and fire and lightning, which would basically be fire, cold and lightning, we would want to keep these two just like that. We would actually not want to craft anything because that is going to dilute the pool of things that we actually want. And because there's a 35% chance that we success and a 55% chance that we get to go again and only a 10% chance that we basically brick completely, it means that as long as these bases are not excessively expensive, we can essentially do this over and over and over again until we actually roll that 35%. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. And let's see if we high roll or not. So it shows fire, it shows fire, and it shows lightning. So in our case, we actually picked all three modifiers. It chose the fire, it chose the cold, it chose the lightning. We essentially won the lottery, right? We won that 35% chance to roll three mods. And because the fire could not be added twice, even if I saw that it was picked twice, it can't be added twice. So it adds something else instead. And in this case, it added, well, I don't know what it added, but it added something else, which allowed us to essentially un, uh, get a triple suffix belt. Now this was T1, T1, T1. Of course, it could be worth a decent chunk of currency. Uh, especially because now it, you could do this twice and then you could prep your prefixes. So hypothetically speaking, let's just say that this was T1, 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 and that I wanted a belt with T1 life and T1% life, uh, which can roll from either hunter or elder. Highly recommend going hunter, uh, however. Uh, I would actually need to prep the hunter bases in order to get this these suffixes all done. Because if I have six modifiers... There's, and, and they're all the same, right? I've got six modifiers in the pool and they're all duplicated. There's a 70% chance that they're all going to be chosen, which means I'm not losing anything and, you know, life is good. There's a 30% chance that we end up losing one of them, but that's just a risk you need to take. But there's a 70% chance that all three modifiers would come along. So then if I want to have, say, T1 life and T1% life, 
the way that I would go about this is essentially because they're treated differently, I'm looking to have two modifiers in the pool. Uh, so what I would do is I would look at having basically as many modifiers in the pool as possible that are removable and that are duplicated. So I would take a belt like this, and then what I would do is I would uh, basically reforge life on it until it gets T1 life, and then I would take the exact same suffixes on another belt, and I would reforge life until it gets percent life. So I would have two belts, one with life, flat and one with life percent that's only two mods in the pool the odds of me winning this is a 33 percent chance that's pretty bad not only is it pretty bad as in the odds of me winning this uh, would be pretty bad there's also the chance that if i don't win this and i go again every single time there's a 33 there's a 30 percent chance that i end up messing up my suffixes that's also bad so what i would need to do is i would craft a duplicated prefix by crafting a duplicated prefix we go from a two mod to a four mod and the odds of actually keeping the mods that we uh, the, the the modifiers there's a 35 percent chance that we end up with three mods now if we do end up with three mods there's a hundred percent chance that we're going to keep the ones that we want because the other one is going to be crafted which means we just remove it from the bench there's a 55 percent chance that we end up with two mods now essentially if it picks one from the bench we've lost however there's a 55 percent chance so that's not bad either and there's a 10 percent chance that you end up basically breaking everything where you could end up with just the modifier from the bench which is duplicated but these are not bad odds and considering that you have a 70 percent chance of keeping your suffixes alive it means that you can do this a couple times the result would end up with triple t1 on your belt and then you would have the t1 life the t1 percent life and then when you do this as long as you roll the three mods in the pool or the two mods in the pool and it's the right mods which means it doesn't roll the crafted mod which is not unlikely either then well basically the same odds as rolling anything else you would actually end up with T1 life, T1 percent life, triple T1 attribute or triple T1 resistances on a belt. Now that's for a belt. You could do the same thing for a claw, right? For a bow. You could do the same thing for basically anything where you you are able to work on prefixes and suffixes one at a time. Especially if one of those things, be it the prefixes or the suffixes, are significantly harder or more important to finish. Such as, for example, on a bow, it would be all about the prefixes, right? So. I'm going to make a, a guide on a step-by-step -step on how to craft, for example, this bow and how we crafted every single one of our items. But if we use that logic that we just uh, that we just learned, the odds of the, the better chance to actually end up with flaring dictators and merciless, which would be triple T1 on the bow, is to basically do the same thing that we did on the belt. Take um, uh, take two of those modifiers on one base and two of those modifiers on the other base and have basically one modifier that is duplicated and then have each base's have one modifier that is not duplicated, and then full send it, right? Of course, uh, you would need to, uh, well, if, you're, if, you're, um, if your actual base was, one of them was synthesized and the other was not synthesized, well, that would dilute your modifiers, and uh, sorry, that would give you a 50% chance of automatically failing if it chose the wrong base. Uh, so it's not as guaranteed as it is, but let's just say that you had those two things on a synthesized base in both cases, your odds become quite decent to end up with you know the triple prefixes that you actually care for as long as you can completely ignore suffixes in your crafting case now if that was to happen and you would end up with triple prefixes uh because essentially you would have four modifiers in the pool so essentially you'd have a 35 percent chance which means on average you would have to do this three times which means you would be deleting three of these synthesized plus one base not to mention the required currency to actually end up with you know the t1t1 because that's not exactly cheap either uh, but that would be how you would actually go about it so that's pretty much my if you will basic guide on resonators and how they actually or not resonators recombinators and how to best utilize them uh utilizing uh, both my knowledge from all the testing that we've done as well as my good friend iron versus wilds reddit post which i'll be linking out in the description the videos from now on are for, for the upcoming days are basically all going to be crafting guys on step-by-step -step on how we made every single one of our items. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to my patrons. So that would be Jaden and Rocky, Max, Nist, HKMZ, Thomas, Mass, Murphy, Solomalk, Alex, The Great Master, Nate, Tim, The Other Alex, The Third Alex, as well as Nayla, Talismar, Ando, Drago, 99, Faith, and Bitizen. Anybody else who has supported me in the past and anyone else who wishes to remain anonymous. Hopefully this was insightful and I catch you guys in the next one. Peace.